Before we dive into the dopamine pathways, let's test your knowledge. Can you answer this clinical question? Lock in your answer now. We will discuss the correct choice at the end of this video. Parkinson's disease is a chronic, progressive, neurodegenerative disorder that fundamentally affects your motor control. It happens because of the loss of dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra pars compacta. This leads to a severe dopamine deficiency in the nigrostriatal pathway. This creates a critical imbalance. Dopamine promotes movement while acetylcholine inhibits it. The result is the classical motor symptoms of Parkinsonism. The basal ganglia are your brain's movement regulators. The direct pathway facilitates motion and the indirect pathway inhibits it. Dopamine activates the direct pathway and inhibits the indirect pathway, ensuring smooth movement. When you lose those dopaminergic neurons, the system breaks down. The direct pathway activity drops and the indirect pathway activity spikes. This massive inhibition of movement leads to bradykinesia and rigidity. The key pathological hallmark is the presence of Lewy bodies, eosinophilic inclusions made up of the protein alpha synuclein. Your core concept is loss of dopamine in the nigrostriatal pathway equals a hypokinetic movement disorder. We categorize the motor symptoms using the mnemonic TRAP. T for tremor. The classic resting tremor often described as pill rolling. It decreases with intentional movement. R for rigidity. This can be smooth lead pipe rigidity or jerky cogwheel rigidity. A for akinesia or bradykinesia. The slowness of movement presenting as a masked facies and small handwriting or micrographia. P for postural instability. A stooped posture and a propensity for falls. Here's an exam tip. Parkinson's symptoms are usually asymmetric at onset. Parkinson's affects multiple systems. Non-motor features include neuropsychiatric issues like depression and cognitive decline. There are autonomic symptoms such as constipation, orthostatic hypotension, and nosmia or loss of smell, which often precedes the motor symptoms. Diagnosis is purely clinical. There is no definitive lab test. The core criteria are bradykinesia, plus either tremor or rigidity. Supportive features include an asymmetric onset, a progressive course, and a clear response to dopaminergic therapy. The goal of treatment is to restore dopaminergic tone. We use levodopa plus carbidopa. Levodopa is the dopamine precursor. Carbidopa prevents its peripheral breakdown, increasing brain availability. The catch. Long-term use causes motor fluctuations like the on-off phenomenon and involuntary movements or dyskinesias. Dopamine agonists, pramipexol, mimic dopamine used early to delay levodopa complications. MAOB inhibitors, selegiline, block dopamine breakdown. COMT inhibitors, entacapone, prolong levodopa effect. Anticholinergics, benztropine, target tremor in younger patients, but avoid them in the elderly. Amantadine helps reduce dyskinesia. Deep brain stimulation, or DBS, is used for refractory motor fluctuations. Now let's go back to our clinical hook question. The most significant long-term complication limiting the dose of levodopa therapy is C. This is the classic side effect of chronic pulsatile dopamine stimulation that every provider must manage. To succeed on your exam, you must recognize the TRAP features, understand the pathway imbalance, and know the pharmacologic logic for restoring dopamine. This is the Y-Medic. Simplifying Neurology, subscribe for more high-yield topics.